Will my jewelry tarnish? Will my jewelry turn my fingers green? Which is the best kind of jewelry to buy? I always get these questions. That's why I'm making this video so that you guys understand the difference between gold plated, gold vermeil, gold filled, and solid gold. So we have four types of gold jewelry that you can buy. It's super easy once you get it. There's kind of a ranking system. There's tiers to your gold jewelry and I will explain it right now. So we kind of have a totem pole going on and I'm gonna give you examples of some of the pieces that I love from each level of the totem pole. So the lowest rung of the totem pole is gold plated and the highest is solid gold. So let's go through all these options. Once you understand it, it's super easy to know which piece is right for you. So number one, at the bottom of the totem pole, we have gold plated jewelry. So gold plated jewelry is what you would find most costume and fashion jewelry to be made out of. You'll usually be able to recognize these by their lower price point and they're sold at fast fashion retailers and lower quality stores. When something is gold plated, it usually means that the base metal that they use to make the piece is brass. And then that brass is then dipped into gold. It's usually less than 1% gold and it's not good quality. At first it may look like it is a regular gold piece, but you will see the wear and tear on this piece way more quickly than you would on any other of the gold pieces. This is the type of jewelry that will usually turn your fingers green, will usually cause reactions, and will usually tarnish super quickly. There is though a place for gold plated jewelry in your jewelry collection. If you want to buy those pieces that are trendy, of the moment pieces that you know are going to go out of style or you're only going to wear for super fun, glamorous occasions, and you don't need it to last your lifetime, sometimes it's okay to just get that cheaper option and spend less money and wear the piece a few times knowing that it's going to not last a long time. I believe that the earrings I'm wearing right now are probably gold plated. I don't even remember where they're from, maybe H&M, but they haven't been worn that often. I usually only wear them like going out for like a dinner or a more elaborate occasion. So I don't get them exposed to water. I don't sweat in them, so they have lasted. So sometimes gold plated could be a perfectly good option. Then we start to get into the more expensive but better quality gold pieces. So first off, this is the next rung on the totem pole. It's gold vermeil. So we have gold plated and then gold vermeil. And so gold vermeil is also plated gold jewelry, but instead of being plated on brass, it's plated on sterling silver. This ups the quality level a bit. It's also typically a thicker gold plating, so you're not going to see tarnishing as quickly, if ever. So we have gold plated, which is a thin layer of gold on a brass as the base metal. Then we have gold vermeil, which is a thicker layer of gold on sterling silver base metal. So the pros and cons to gold vermeil. First of all, it's more affordable than solid gold jewelry that's what I really like it is an affordable price point and then you're also getting that level up in quality so you're getting a bit of a better quality than you would for gold plated and your piece will likely last longer the cons are that it's kind of that in-between spot sometimes people might think like I should just go for the solid gold or gold filled pieces if I really want something to last or just get like some costume jewelry but you definitely just have to find what works for you I personally have a lot of gold vermeil pieces a lot of them from Majuri that have lasted me for over a few years now. And I will show you some of these pieces right now. So I have this chain link necklace and it's so beautiful. It looks like it could be solid gold and it's not. I wear it very often. It's definitely a staple in my jewelry collection and it's lasted. I also have these editor hoops, which are absolutely perfect hoops. I always thought of them as my perfect work hoops because I found them to be that sweet spot between little hoops and big hoops. These ones are perfect. So. I hold them up to my ear you can see they're like they're like half the size of these crazy mamas so those editor hoops have been put to the test and they have passed with flying colors and then the next piece that i have been loving from a jury that's gold vermeil is this herringbone chain so as you can see it looks super shiny and beautiful and i have had no issues with it tarnishing or turning green or anything like that so there's definitely some very good quality affordable gold vermeil options out there so we have gold plated gold vermeil and now we're on to gold filled the third stop on our totem pole and gold filled jewelry is probably my personal favorite jewelry because it is that top quality gold jewelry right before you get into solid gold which can be so expensive so gold filled jewelry is by law required to be 5% gold. The piece will always be stamped on the inside so that you can see that it does have that gold filled 
property to it. And instead of being dipped in gold, like gold verme and gold plated, it's actually gonna have a thick layer of gold bonded to the base metal. So it's a mechanical process that is different from just dipping your base metal into a layer of gold. So gold filled jewelry actually does usually have a base metal of brass. That isn't as big a deal as it would be if it was plated because the gold layer is so much thicker that you're not gonna ever really see the base metal underneath. So the pros and cons of gold filled jewelry is that it won't tarnish, it's good for everyday wear, it's good for all skin types and it's hypoallergenic. And then it's also great because it's still at an affordable price point. I mean, it depends on what you consider affordable or what you're willing to spend on jewelry. Not everyone's going to consider it affordable, which is totally understandable. And you might just want to go for gold plated pieces and that's totally fine. But in relation to solid gold jewelry, it's way more affordable, but it's still at that higher quality. Again, as with my gold vermeil jewelry, I have found that none of my gold filled pieces have tarnished even a little bit and I've had them for years. So it's also a really good option for anyone who's looking for affordable and high quality jewelry. And the rings that I'm wearing right now are gold filled. These are from Dramami and I'm wearing all of these little ones. These actually are not stamped because they're so thin but this one is stamped inside so you would see the stamp so it is stamped inside and you can see and make sure that it's good quality now we're getting to our fourth and final rung up here solid gold so we have again i need to reiterate it just so you guys can really visualize the tier system so we have gold plated gold vermeil gold filled and then solid gold so solid gold, as most of you would probably know, is the best quality jewelry that you can get. It's the best quality gold. If you have a solid gold piece, whether it's 10 karat gold, 14 karat gold, 24 karat gold, 18 karat gold, you name it, those are the best quality gold pieces that you can buy. The downside to this is that it is more expensive and buying solid gold can count on this piece to last you for your lifetime and you can pass it on to different generations and it's just going to last but the price can be exorbitant and sometimes unaffordable. So it just depends if you wanna get maybe a classic piece that's going to last you for a long time and you know you're not gonna get sick of the style, then 100% go for that gold, go for the gold. But if it's something that's more trendy, then maybe you can consider getting one of the lower tier options. That being said, just for you guys to know how solid gold works. So a gold piece is considered to be made up of 24 parts. So if you have a 14 karat gold piece, then that means that it's 14 parts gold and 10 parts other alloys or 10 parts gold 14 parts other alloys if it's a 10 karat gold piece and if it's a 24 karat gold piece that means it's 24 parts gold so just for you guys to know your gold terminology gold can even be an investment sometimes because it can go up in value so keep that in mind if you're trying to invest in a gold piece it could actually appreciate over the years just to show you a few of my favorite gold pieces, I'm wearing the bold hoops right now as a secondary hoop and then a third. The bold hoops are 14 karat yellow gold. They're beautiful, they're simple. The reason that I think it's okay to buy something like those bold hoops in a solid gold is because they are simple, they're understated and they're classic. They will, no matter what, always be in style. And then I also have this mini lotus bracelet. I'm gonna try and link it um, below, but I don't know if they have it anymore. I've been trying to get on the link on my jury, but I haven't been able to, but I'll still try and find something like it if not. So this is the bracelet that is 14 karat gold and white sapphires, I think. So that concludes our little mini gold lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will link in the description below all the pieces I mentioned if you want to check them out. I hope you learned something and I hope that you could take this knowledge with you on your next shopping spree. I post fashion, beauty, and travel videos. So if you are interested in that, please feel free to subscribe and let me know what you guys want to see next in the comments down below. Thank you guys so, so much. And and I'll see you next time.